Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ann Cothwalla, and I'm the President and CEO of the Convenience Industry Council of Canada. Premier Ford, Minister Beth Falvey, Parliamentary Assistant Byers, and distinguished guests. On behalf of the Convenience Industry Council of Canada, it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. It's great to be on site at one of our local corner stores, who are convenient in good times and essential in tough times. Thank you to Steve Pitts, Nelson Couteau, Joe Morrow for hosting us here. Every year, millions of Ontarians count on stores just like these, an important staple of local communities. Soon, our customers will have even more choice at their local convenience store. We commend the Premier and Minister of Finance for your commitment to provide Ontarians with the convenience they want, while also giving thousands of Ontario retailers and producers opportunities to grow their businesses. Our stores in other provinces have been selling these products responsibly for decades. We look forward to bringing the successes of this model to Ontario, which ensures convenience and choice for our customers and a viable future for our retailers. Thank you so much, and it is now my great pleasure to introduce Minister of Finance, Minister Peter Bethenfalby. Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, Anne, and good morning, everyone. And, and uh, you know, you've done a great job uh, leading the Convenience Industry Council of Canada, and thank you for being part of today's announcement. You know, it's great to be here in Etobicoke again with my our great friend and the colleague and Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, and of course he knows this because I tell them my parents live just down the street, my cousin Jane and John live on each side of Royal York, uh, my uh, aunt and uncle, my, my sisters, my nephew. So uh, big responsibilities here in Etobicoke, and I can't think of a better representative, not only for Etobicoke, but uh, all of Ontario than Premier Ford. I'd also like to recognize my parliamentary assistant, Rick Byers, who's done a lot of work on this file and uh, getting us to where we are today. So thank you, Rick. I, I want to also a big, give a big shout out to uh, the many industry associations and partners who have joined us. Uh, they're just outside because the room was just a little too too small for everyone to be here, but they are here uh, and they are thrilled. And I want to also say a big shout out to, you know, uh, getting to today, and this is a big, big day for Ontario, for, for the people of Ontario, but it's also uh, because of our great public sector workers, uh, our Secretary of Cabinet, our Deputy Minister, Greg Orenchek, and the whole team in the public service who help us get to a day like today. So I just want to thank them for their public service. They're the, the unsung heroes behind uh, all of us. You know, since 2018, our government has taken steps to give people more options to purchase their beer, their wine, and their cider. Depuis 2018, notre gouvernement a pris des mesures pour offrir aux gens plus d'options pour l'achat de la bière, du vin et du cidre. We've made it possible to purchase alcohol with takeout and delivery orders at more than 18,000 restaurants and bars. It's now possible to support small local producers and buy alcohol at farmers markets. In all, we've expanded the sale of beverage alcohol to hundreds of new points of sale. But the Master Framework Agreement, signed by the previous government in 2015, limited us on how far we could expand the sale of alcohol in Ontario. This is because the agreement limited the number of and types of retail stores that could sell alcohol, creating less choice and creating inconvenience for consumers. Well, today, we're taking the next step to change that. And I'm very proud and pleased that today, that we're going to share with you the information that the government has informed the beer store that the master framework agreement will not be renewed after it expires on December 31, 2025. And as we take this step forward today, we will ensure that Ontario's alcohol retail landscape continues to be stable, smooth, and responsible. I'd now like to welcome my colleague, and it's a great honor to introduce Premier Doug Ford to the podium to discuss in more detail the biggest step yet by our government to deliver on our, on our promise to consumers. Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in the great state of Etobicoke, beautiful Etobicoke, 
And I'm just waiting uh, for the minister, uh, Beth and Falvey, to move here eventually because you, all your relatives are here and so on and so forth. And MPP, Rick Byers, uh, Rick, you've done an incredible job in this file and we're very, very grateful. I also want to recognize Ann. And thank you so much for all the work that you've done and all the stakeholders that are just outside this door. Uh, they've been absolutely incredible and all our association partners that are, are here today. Thank you for joining us for this very special announcement. In 2018, we made a promise to you. We made a promise to the people of Ontario to bring beer and wine to convenience and grocery stores across Ontario. Today, we are thrilled to be delivering on that commitment with the largest expansion of consumer choice and convenience since the end of prohibition almost 100 years ago. By no later than January 2026, people in Ontario will be able to buy beer, wine, cider, and other ready-to-drink alcohol beverages like coolers and seltzers at their local convenience store just like this one, or at grocery and big box stores. Spirits like vodka, gin, and whiskey will continue to be sold at the LCBO. This expanded marketplace will give people more choice more convenience, and more time. Folks, we all have busy lives, so just imagine on a Friday night in December, instead of being stuck in a long lineup at the LCBO, you'll be able to pop into your local convenience store or grab a bottle of wine at a, a local retail or a big box store before heading out to the holiday party. Or in the summer, you'll be able to buy a case of beer at a grocery or big box store while you're stocking up on food and snacks ahead of your vacation up north or out east at the cottage. These new rules finally put Ontario in line with Quebec and other provinces and pretty well everywhere else in the world because there's absolutely no reason that people in Ontario shouldn't enjoy the same convenient shopping experience as other Canadians do. In addition to the expanded marketplace, we're going to remove restrictions on the size of bundled packages so that people can purchase a 12 pack, 24 packs, or even 30 packs of beer, cider, and ready to drink alcohol beverages regardless of where they make their purchase. And we're going to make sure Ontario made products, including wine and craft beer, continue to receive dedicated shelf space. And that local producers receive the supports they need to grow their sales and protect their workforce. This new open marketplace is going to create new opportunities for local brewers, wineries, and retailers. It's going to support local jobs, and most importantly, it's going to give people more choice and convenience. <coughs> Friends, since we were first elected in office in 2018, our government has been working hard to make life easier and more convenient for Ontario families. All across government, we're putting customers first. We're modernizing outdated regulations and reducing and eliminating unnecessary red tape that costs people time and money. We're working for you. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. We'll now go to reporters' questions. If media could please identify themselves by name and outlet. It'll be one question and one follow-up. First question. Premier, it's Richard Southern with City Hi, News. Richard. How are you doing? How are you? Good, how are you? Fantastic. Uh, are you excited about buying a case of beer? <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm working, Premier. I might have to wait. <laughs> well, um, that stop you. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you might get some more favorable press. Uh, you, you, know, you bill it as a convenience factor. Pick sure up is. some beer before you're going out to the dinner party. Yep. But do you think we really need it. Do you think it's safe to be able to buy a White Claw at a gas station at 7 in the morning as you're going to allow? Yeah, absolutely, Richard. You know, we got to start treating people like uh, adults here in the province. It's right across our country. It's across all 50 states. To be very frank, it's across the world. We're the only jurisdiction uh, that still uh, had uh, really an area that you could only buy beer in the beer store. And by the way, the beer store has been great partners, and we're going to continue working with them. And I just want to thank them, and I want to thank their, their team. Uh, we're going to continue having a great relationship with them. 
My follow-up is from my colleague, Cynthia Mulligan. Sure. She wants to know, what's going on with you and Bonnie Crombie? It seems personal. You haven't congratulated her, which is standard protocol. Yeah. You say in the legislature she has a house in the Hamptons, which she doesn't, yet you have a place in Muskoka and Florida. Are you afraid of Bonnie Crombie, sir? No, you, you know something? We're going to continue focusing on what, what we're doing, uh, continue lowering taxes on businesses, the $8 billion we've We've lowered businesses and the burden off of uh, companies, and that's why we've seen tremendous growth. We've seen $27 billion of EV investment. We've seen $15 billion in the tech sector. We, we've seen $3 billion in life sciences. And I just want to remind everyone, under the previous Liberals, they chased 300,000 jobs out of this province. As we stand today, there's over 715,000 people that have a good paying job that can buy food and, and pay rent or get a mortgage. Uh, that's the difference between ourselves and, and the provincial Liberal government. They destroyed the province. We're fixing it. We're an economic powerhouse in North America. Morning, Premier. Liam Casey with the Canadian Press. Hello. Um, so the Auditor General noted the other week that your government didn't consult with Public Health Ontario on your previous moves to expand access to alcohol. Did you consult with Public Health Ontario or any other health experts before well, before this announcement? Yeah, well, thanks for that. I'll pass that over to the architect of, of this, and that's uh, Peter Bethenbaldi. Thank you, thank you, Premier. You know, we uh, we consulted not only with a robust number of uh, stakeholders. I'm pretty sure Public Health Ontario was part of that. But uh, going forward, like this is just the the first part of uh, modernizing alcohol. Uh, we're going to continue to have a robust consultation period. You know, one thing the Ministry of Finance, uh, who's been running this file, uh, is good at is consultations. Uh, we do that for the budget, so we we know how to do that. And we're talking to many. Uh, social, re socially responsible stakeholders, uh, because that's very important to us. In fact, part of this announcement is uh, uh, ten million dollars to help um, support those organizations, uh, because we take social responsibility very seriously. But as the premier said, I think uh, we've got a lot of experience in this and uh, treating uh, Ontarians uh, as adults. I think and a track record of uh, responsible. Uh, distribution and uh, points of sale. This is a this is a good day for Ontarians. Thank you. You know, folks. I, I'll tell you, this is extremely, extremely popular uh, right across our province. Very popular. Uh, Premier, there's been a number of uh, major uh, reversals from your government uh, over the last little bit. Um, so, how sure are you this decision won't be reversed down the road? Well, you, you know something. I'm. I'm pretty confident you know our, our the team that went in there and uh, they looked at it and and they came back to us and, and said you know this this just isn't uh, realistic they they thought uh, changing services that uh, let's say changing the police changing paramedics public health social services uh, this wouldn't be beneficial for for the people do you know what the biggest mistake is with elected officials politicians across this country they dig their heels in even though they know it may, may not be the right decision, and they move forward. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, we run it like a business. If you have a business and uh, you, you don't think uh, you're, you're going down the right avenue, you listen to the people, you listen to the stakeholders, and uh, that's what we're doing. But we, we, aren't, you know, we aren't getting rid of the, the bill. We're amending the bill. And uh, services uh, that, uh, similar to roads and, and land use planning, that's going to help us get more homes built a lot faster and uh, more efficiently. So there, there's not a lower tier government anywhere that I know of that doesn't want that ability to be able to build homes and uh, work with their community. Yeah, hi, Premier. Randy Rath from CHTV. Hey, Randy. Um, CAMH says that uh, increased availability of alcohol leads to more consumption and the related harms. Um, is, is the increased sales going to bring in enough tax revenue to cover the increased costs that the health care system is ultimately going to have to well, shoulder? Good. Yeah, well, thanks for that, Randy. I think CAMH does an incredible job. We support them 100%, um, and I understand their, their concern. But, you know, you can't have all of Canada, all the U.S., the entire world, being able to go into uh, a big box store, a retailer, 
and pick up a case of beer or a bottle of wine, we, we got to treat our, our people of Ontario like adults, and that's what we're doing. Uh, they have a responsibility uh, to drink uh, responsibly, uh, don't drive, uh, take an Uber, take a taxi, but that's that's what we're doing. We're actually uh, treating people like, like adults, and I have all the confidence in the world and the people in Ontario that they're going to be responsible. With the changes to um, <clears throat> the winemakers in the province, do you expect the cost of a bottle of wine bought at a, 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 at a winemaker's store to uh, go down by 6.1% since you're dropping the, uh, the base tax? Well, I'll tell you, before I pass it to the, the minister, uh, all the sector is as happy as they could, they could ever be. And they've been great partners, you know, with the great consultation that uh, uh, Rick and, and Peter have done with the sector. They tweak some, some things. But I can tell you, I've never seen uh, that sector smile as much as they're, they're smiling right now. And we're making ourselves uh, as competitive, not more competitive, than everywhere else in, in the country. That's what we need to do. We have to support our, our wine uh, grape growers. We've got to support our wineries, uh, large and small. And uh, they're, I'll tell you, they're very, very happy uh, today. But I'll pass it over to Peter. Yeah, thanks, Premier. Th thanks for the question. You know, this, uh, you know, no one likes taxes. And I think what uh, the wine sector really wants is they want a level playing field. They want a, they want a shot to compete. I think that makes the, all the sense in the world. So this is this is going to help. Uh, and we have a good industry in Ontario. And we're always going to uh, level a playing field where people can, businesses, small business in particular, can compete. And uh, and we're always going to fight and defend uh, Ontario businesses. So that's just another example of something that was put in uh, by the previous government that we're saying uh, we're helping them out by taking it away. And, and they can just choose whether they want to pass that uh, savings on to their consumers or reinvest in their business. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Hi, Alan. Hey, um, so I, I appreciate that you are saying you don't, the government doesn't like to dig its heels in and you're willing to change course, but sure. Hazel, Hazel McCallion was always saying that you need to do your homework, and it really does seem from the outside, at least, that this government continues not to do its homework. You keep making these policy decisions that you seem to personally champion, and then you end up having to uh, reverse them. Like, we have the green belt, we have using the notwithstanding clause, we have all these, th and now you are going back on the uh, Peel region thing. So when can we expect this government to start thinking more about what, how these policies are going to be, going to play out before passing them? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I appreciate the question. Isn't that a good thing that we're open-minded? We listen to people, you name three things, I can sit here and name 500 things that we move forward to make it a uh, lot more uh, uh, competitive in, in the marketplace for businesses to come here. We're fixing the health care uh, system. We've seen uh, 25,000 people come off the backlog surgery list. We're building $50 billion worth of hospitals in 50 areas of this province. Uh, we've made, uh, you know, opening a business here in Ontario a good thing. I talked to a lot of our counterparts in the U.S., and their their you know their comments are, "Wow, what are you guys doing up there? It's incredible. Uh, we're eating their lunch, to be very frank, right now in all sectors, and uh, so we're doing an, an incredible job for the people of Ontario, reducing taxes on the backs of uh, taking the taxes off the backs of the people. No matter if you, you ever drive down the street, just down that Pioneer gas station there." Last night I drove by, it was $1.30.4. Uh, Just imagine if we didn't take the 10.7 cents off. That's saving a tr millions and tens of millions of dollars going back into people's pockets. The little license sticker uh, tax, we, we reduced that. We're, we're giving a tax break to the lowest 1.1 million people with uh, the LIV program. And I could go on and on and on. So it's a good thing. And talking about my, my good friend, uh, Hazel. You know, we had a discussion many times about this, but I'll tell you something about Hazel, and you can ask, be it her son or family or good friends. If we sat down and I said, Hazel, taxes are going to be in double digits. It's going to hurt the people of Mississauga. It's going to hurt the people. And he, by the way, he, she was just as popular in Mississauga as she was in Brampton and Calden. Uh, she'd say no. But what she would be in favor of, making sure that the lower tier governments, be it Mississauga, Brampton, or Calden, have the ability and the authority 
to get shovels in the ground and start building and building homes. You know, you look at Hazel, she built Mississauga. And the last thing Hazel McCallion would ever want is to increase taxes. That's the last thing. And uh, that's that's what we're doing. We're, we're listening to the, the team, the, you know, the folks that we put in there to uh, uh, review everything. And they've come back and given their suggestions. Wouldn't it be terrible if I ignored that, dug my heels in? That'd be the worst thing to do. <coughs> Okay, but it seems like you keep putting out these uh, policy ideas that people point out to you beforehand are going to have problems, and then you recognize it afterwards. Like so you, you're, you're talking about that you're bringing legislation next session about uh, uh, to uh, help uh, landlords get rid of professional scammer tenants. Now, can we be confident that this um, that this legislation will be completely thought through? Yeah. And not uh, something that needs to be reversed after landlords uh, use the whatever you're going to propose to uh, uh, cause Abs mass evictions. A absolutely. And do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask my team to send over the binder that thick of all of our accomplishments to make Ontario greater and better. And uh, we'll run through it because there's uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, items that we've made Ontario better. It's as simple as that. And we're going to continue uh, making sure that we have gains moving forward. And you, you, you look at, uh, and these, these are pretty good numbers here. We have created more jobs in Ontario, double the amount than all 50 states combined. I'm going to repeat that. We've created more jobs in Ontario than all 50 states combined. We are an economic powerhouse, uh, not only in North America, but around the world. And we're going to continue being the leader. Hi, Premier. Uh, Mike Crawley from uh, CBC. Hi, Mike. Um, I've heard it reported that uh, you don't actually drink alcohol yourself. Could you no. just go? Uh, so some people wonder, like, why is it that you make this a priority for, uh, uh, for your government? Well, I, you know something? When we make a promise, we like keeping the promise, and we want to make sure that we're in line with everyone else in the world and across Canada. Uh, being able to go into a store, you're buying a steak, grab a bottle of wine, and go home. That's a good thing. And we know it's a good thing. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people, a lot of stakeholders. Uh, this is a real positive announcement that we're finally, uh, you know, getting in line in, in uh, this time and age that people can actually be responsible and buy uh, a bottle of wine. Do you remember the days, now I'm aging myself, uh, younger folks won't remember this, but Mike, you're, you're, you're up there with me. Uh, do you remember the time you'd go in with your parents and you'd sign a little slip and you'd slide it through to the person at the LCBO, all the booze was hidden? It's unheard of. Remember the days, folks, that we could not shop on a Sunday? You know, these are the changes that, are, that we're going to make and just make it more convenient and really be like the rest of the country. And uh, I heard your answer about Hazel McCallion and how yes. she would, you know, not appreciate a tax increase. Yeah. But do you feel even maybe a tiny bit guilty that you're breaking a promise you made to her after she died? Uh, no, not at all. We, we were best of pals. And uh, I, I knew Hazel very, very well. If I told her the situation and she spoke to uh, folks in her circles, and I know a couple people that were very close advisors to, to Hazel, that at one time thought it'd be a good idea uh, to have a standalone uh, city. But when you say uh, we're going to hurt public health, we're going to hurt social services, we're going to split up the paramedics, we're going to split up the police, and we're going to raise taxes. You know what Hazel would say? We can't do it. But she would say, give me more powers on a local level, which we're doing, uh, to be able to build homes. And that's, that, I know that's what she'd be saying. And the other people I've talked to her that have known her very well would say the exact same thing uh, to her, and she'd agree. Hi, Premier. Hi. Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, just on the, the Peel issue, uh, I hear what you're saying, concerns about taxes and things like that were, that were brought up by Patrick Brown, for instance, but the process hadn't actually been completed. The Transition Board didn't come back with anything. So why are you abandoning it sort of mid-ship as the, you know, in, before it's even done? 
Well, we, we've talked to the transition uh, team, and I just want to thank the transition team. I want to thank the chair, John Levy. I worked with him at City Hall, one of the brightest people when it comes to municipal issues in, in the province. And when they recommend not to do something, uh, wouldn't it be the wrong thing to do is you have a transition team and you totally ignore them? But we, we are amending the legislation. We aren't getting rid of, rid of it. We're going to give the lower tier municipalities and out of the 444 municipalities in this province, I don't know of one of all 444 mayors and wardens that don't want more authority to have, uh, you know, uh, for, for planning uh, land use and, and other areas that uh, they're going to focus on getting homes built, getting more revenues uh, into the coffers for their, for their municipality. Okay, thanks. And just on today's announcement, you first promised this in 2018. It turned out that was a bit more complicated and a lot more expensive, I think, yep. than your government had initially thought. Um, you know, looking back, do you think that maybe you overpromised six years ago or almost six years ago when you said you were going to do this? And um, can you explain to people why it's taken so long? Well, it's a very complicated uh, situation, but the most important thing is, uh, you know, we got it done. Uh, the, uh, the framework agreement is very complicated, and uh, I'll let I'll let uh, the minister uh, Bethan Falvey uh, tell you some details about how how hard it is to move forward with so many uh, different sectors. But the good news is, we get things done, and we got this done. Sorry, Peter. Yeah, th th thank you, Premier, and thank you, Laura, for for the question. You know. Uh, it is complicated for sure, but this is a big win and big day for all Ontarians. Uh, I, as the Premier said, you know, the many, many industry players that have been asking for decades, in some cases decades for changes, uh, and uh, had to watch the Master Framework Agreement uh, monopoly for the beer store over seven years. Uh, it was a challenging time, and, and earlier, you know, we got together with them just a few minutes before, and I've never seen so many of them smile. And I said, take a picture. I, I want a record of this that they're smiling today, and it is a big day. Uh, the framework is, is, is ending. This is, a good new, this is good news for, for Ontarians, uh, providing convenience and choice. It's a, a commitment that the Premier made. I'm very pleased to, uh, to be the, the, the minister to, to execute uh, this uh, this uh, agreement with uh, the beer store, uh, and uh, we'll we'll continue to have conversations with them, but but let's be clear: th this is uh, something that we want to ensure is a smooth and stable uh, transition. With that complexity, and uh, they'll beer store will play a role in uh, distribution and recycling, which is very important to Ontarians. The LCBO will play a role in wholesaling, and uh, this allows for up to almost over 8,000 new points of sale uh, to, to be able to sell uh, alcohol at convenience stores and grocery stores. And uh, I'm very proud of that today. And I'm very proud that uh, the Premier made that commitment and we've honored that commitment to the people of Ontario. Hi there, Siobhan Morris, CTV News. Hi, Siobhan. Uh, considering you're at, you're, you anticipate as many as 8,500 outlets to be able or, or wanting to sell this alcohol, I'm not hearing anything about any more resources on the enforcement side with more inspectors for AGCO. Is there any more thought to adding some more muscle on that end of things so they can handle taking a look and making sure everybody's complying with the rules? Sure, good, good point. I'll let the, the minister uh, talk about that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, a very important uh, question. You know, we have a pretty rigorous regime of, uh, of regulation and guardrails uh, and enforcement uh, as we do through the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. And, you know, they're, they're an interested stakeholder as the process as we move forward with the details on, on how we advance a modern uh, alcohol framework. Uh, we take uh, the social responsibility aspect of what we're announcing today extremely seriously. And that's why we're going to continue to engage with uh, folks like the, the people at the AGCO, multiple ministers, uh, ministries, and as well as the multiple stakeholders who have a very strong interest in making sure that Ontario is the, the safest place for consuming alcohol and that, that rules and regulations are being followed, including, uh, you know, the many convenience stores who have a track record of selling uh, tobacco and uh, lottery tickets very s safe with a very rigorous program to making sure that uh, 
that that is done the most effective way, and that's just part of the consultations that we'll engage with uh, on an ungame basis over the next uh, little while. And some of the people, I think, who might be caught up um, in this move to modernize are people who work at the beer store and the LCBO right now. Can you speak to them and some of the anxieties they might be feeling, thinking that their jobs might be on the line, and, and something I think the government's kind of acknowledged as possible? Yeah, well, we're going to continue working with a great partner in the beer store. Uh, they do some great uh, uh, jobs, like delivery is, is one, recycling they do great jobs, uh, job on as well. And LCBO, it's uh, a great crown asset, and it's not going anywhere. Uh, they, they do an incredible job uh, for the people of Ontario. Uh, they have selection, so if someone wants some exotic wine or some, some other drinks, they can, they can go to the LCBO. I'm very proud of uh, how the LCBO is running right now. It's a great profit center that we can take the profits from there and invest it into healthcare and education. Uh, that's that's what we're going to continue doing. So, LCBO, you're doing a great job. This will be the last reporter. Hi, Premier. Kayla Williams with CB24. Hey, Kayla. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, yeah. Just a quick question as far as what would be your message to Ontarians that are listening today and they're saying, okay, you know, the message here is convenience and that's great. However, what they really want is to see the prices when they walk into a convenience store or to a grocery store go down as opposed to the accessibility of liquor and that today's kind of missing the mark on what real Ontarians are really struggling with right now in this day and age. Well, you, you know something, um, let me address it this way. Uh, the market dictates. And when you get the big retailers, be it the Costco's of the world, the Loblaws, the Metro's, the Sobeys, um, you know, dealing with uh, uh, buying this, they, they're, they're going to have a choice. Either lower the cost, keep it the same. Uh, we want to be competitive with Quebec. Uh, I know uh, many people, including my my friend Peter uh, they goes to Quebec, visits people there, and guess what? He can go into a Costco and uh, get a case of beer a lot cheaper than they can in Ontario. The market will dictate, and uh, let's see what happens. But I'm, I'm confident that uh, eventually you'll be paying less than you would in a, a monopoly for 100 years, and that was at the beer store. I'll pass it over to you, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Premier. You know, I did. Uh, I did grow up in uh, in Quebec, and you know, in the, since the 70s, they've been able to people have been able to buy wine and, and beer in uh, convenience stores in the Dépanneurs. Uh, look, we're we're moving forward today with uh, dynamic and competitive pricing, as the Premier just said. Uh, this is a good day for the consumer to have choice, uh, to have convenience, and to uh, to have competition. Uh, what an incredible principle! So that. Uh, you know the consumer will be able to uh, to have that uh, and the opportunity uh, in businesses to compete. And this opens up 8,500 up to 8,500 points of sale. Uh, we I think this is an important uh, day in the evolution of a hundred-year market that you know the Liquor Control Board started in 1927, so it's almost a hundred years. Um, we didn't want to wait for the hundred-year anniversary to to reform uh, alcohol uh, distribution in, in Ontario. So. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're doing it with our partners and stakeholders. We're doing it uh, through uh, consultation. And uh, I think this is a great day for those Ontarians uh, right across the province who want convenience and choice and, and price uh, opportunities. So thank you for that question. Yeah, and my follow-up would be you mentioned that, you know, it's time to let adults in Ontario be adults. But the reality of it is is that we do have children. We, yet we have young kids that can access grocery stores and convenience stores at any time of day and um, when you take a look at some of the marketing on some of these packages I'm sure there's a lot of parents who may be concerned that it will be very easily accessible for young children to reach for the wrong product once this comes into effect no that, that's just not going to happen the convenience stores uh, owners uh, and associations are very responsible it's no different than buying a pack of smokes or like uh, Peter said a lottery ticket but they're going to be uh, responsible and very, very confident uh, they'll, they'll be that way. And again, uh, I can assure you, as I'm standing here, you will be one of those people going in the convenience store. You'll be going to the, one of the big retail and you'll be buying a bottle of wine. You'll be buying maybe a case of beer, 
or coolers or seltzers. Uh, this is a good thing. Folks, we're so blessed to live in Ontario. I have the opportunity and the privilege to talk to a lot of people around the world and uh, we have such a diverse community. You talk to a lot of people around the world. We are so fortunate to live in the greatest jurisdiction anywhere, right here in Ontario. We're moving in the right direction on the economy, on putting money back into people's pockets, of attracting new, new opportunities and new jobs uh, right here in Ontario. I always say you create the environment and the conditions for companies to come here and companies and people will thrive and grow and prosper. Well, we're going to make sure that Ontario is the most prosperous jurisdiction anywhere in the world. We'll always uh, look out for the, the people of Ontario. I want to thank each and every one of you. This is a new chapter in Ontario. It's fantastic. And uh, I, again, I just want to thank everyone, all the stakeholders uh, involved, and, and yourself, and, and obviously Rick and, and Peter, and and the uh, deputy ministers and and so on and so forth and a uh, big shout out to uh, Secretary of Cabinet Michelle D'Emmanuel, uh, true champion, true leader down at Queen's Park. And uh, I'm not a drinker, but I'm tempted to go back there, crack up one of those uh, whatever they are, ciders and take a little swig, but I won't do that. I'll do it at another time. Anyways, thank you so much everyone. God bless you. Thanks.